so far we've been talking about only reading files but what happens when I want to uh, write files maybe for example I want to take that readings.txt file that I'm working off of and I want to extract some data and then maybe instead of just displaying it to my computer or displaying it to uh, the screen I would like to store that information uh, this typically is through something that we like to call pre-processing. So I, I'm reading a file, I do some processing to create another file that may later on be used uh, just in future data analysis. So let's see, here we are. So for example, I've had that readings uh, file, I'm reading it, I read the contents, I am going to just move things around just a little bit just to um, have things a little uh, more together. So for example, I'm going to uh, put the contents together in one area and I'm actually just going to close the file as soon as I'm finished reading it. This is uh, typically how I like to uh, write files that involve uh, file handling. Uh, I'm done with that file now. I, you know, it, all of its contents have been read into memory, stored in memory. They are now a text, uh, you know, a string in my computer program. I no longer need the file uh, itself and the reason for this is because uh, you know when we're dealing with files uh, if you have it open uh, your operating system doesn't allow it to be used or manipulated elsewhere uh, that's just it's kind of rule of thumb because it doesn't want you to try to read something but you're doing something to it uh, and you may have sort of a an issue on do I, I read in the thing that you just edited or not so uh, as a good rule of thumb, uh, as soon as you do something like read lines, uh, dot close immediately is the way I would recommend it. If you're doing a read line instead, uh, in that case, right afterwards, just like I had with the uh, after the for loop. So again, the idea is uh, I want to take uh, these numbers that I'm getting here. And for my sake, maybe I want to uh, do some type of analysis. I want to... Uh, do just some simple processing. I'm going to take each one of these numbers, divide them by uh, 10 because they're reading at 100. You know, it's not that uh, it was 750 degrees in this kitchen. It was 75 degrees. The thermostat did weird things. So in that case, well, I want to convert that into uh, just I want to make that smaller. And then I want to write those to their own separate file. So in that case, I'm going to make another file. Uh, typically, I like to call this something like output phi or phi output, just noting the difference between it being my input file and my output file. So in this case, uh, converted. So the same kind of principles come into play here. You notice I'm using the relative file reference. Uh, again, I go up a directory, I see the data directory, go down to it, and in this case, uh, I'm going to now create a uh, converted.txt file. So the same kind of concepts come in here. And now that phi is no longer being used, I am going to use its uh, variable name again. Uh, that just is my sort of uh, rule of thumb. I could have been using file name, but that's, you know, different choices going on there. But again, the idea is now instead of having an R for read, I'm going to have a W for write. Huh. And so the same kind of concept comes into play here. I'm reading in, in particular, all these different lines. Now, in this case, actually, I don't need this anymore. I'm not printing those files. I could, but I'm not going to. Same kind of concept has gone on. I have my phi.open. I'm going to be working off of this. Now, for the contents, I'm still traversing them. I'm still splitting them. I'm going to, instead of just print my temperature, I'm going to call it uh, temp equals uh, reading three. Now, again, it is just a string, so I am going to convert it into an integer. And for our sake, just for, again, what I want to do with uh, just this example, divided by 10. So take my string of three numbers, uh, in this case, three numbers, uh, Hopefully it never hit 100 degrees in the kitchen. Uh, but take these three numbers, take these numbers that are currently a string, convert them into the integer, divide them by 10. Now, like I said, I want to take this and I want to uh, write it to another file, right? 
And with that in mind, I can come in and I, again, have that phi file, phi. Uh, again, this version, not my readings, uh, I'm reusing the variable name, dot write. Now, you see I have two options, write and write lines. If we take a look, again, write is specific to writing to one line, and you'll see this in a second, or multiple lines. I could make a direct, uh, make a list, add every number to that list, and then say write the lines, and it'll write it on its own lines. To each their own, really. I'll show both variations. But just to kind of show this, write temp. Same kind of concept goes on here. Now that I'm finished, uh, you know, I'm going to traverse every single number. Now that I've traversed every single number, it's a good to close it. Now notice I'm doing that outside of the for loop. Again, this is the idea is do it uh, the entire time. If I closed it right away, you get an error. And for that sake, let's just see what error you get. Right, uh, must be a string, not a float. Oh, okay, I know it. That, so I got a few different things going on here. So it doesn't like the fact that I'm attempting to write a uh, What's the word I'm looking for? It doesn't like that I'm attempting to write an integer to this. So there are a few different options I could do. I could uh, come in here and convert this back into a string. And now it, it freaked out. There's another error for other things going on there. Uh, one of the things I, I typically like to do uh, for this type of situation uh, is I like to create something called line. Line. Uh, and in particular for this, you know, again, we've seen me use line a few times in class. The entire idea here is what this is doing is uh, this is serving as sort of the template uh, string that I'll then use uh, dot format to manipulate. So in my case, uh, I will say I'm going to add some words, reading and just reading uh, with my uh, brackets, first one, and then inside of my right line dot format temp. Now again, uh, I also have an error of IO operation. Uh, it, you can't see the uh, little bit that's saying on a closed file. Again, that's because uh, I attempt, I'm attempting to write like uh, the second temperature uh, on a file that's currently closed because the next thing I did was close after I wrote that first line. That's why, like I was saying, uh, you want this to be after the for loop. So now if I run this, Okay, no errors. You can see uh, not a single error going on there. Ooh, there we are. Not a single error going on here. And if we take a look inside of that directory again, okay, there's data. There's my converted.txts. And if we look inside there, you can see reading 76.0. Now you are noticing, yes. Oh, in fact, uh, it's just reading everything uh, attached to each other. And that's why, for example, in the slides, I also showed that slash in. If I did want to make sure that when I'm doing dot writes, throwing a slash in at the very end is going to say, write this line and hit the inner key. You know, go ahead and move to the next line before you add in any more. So in this case, I've rewritten it this time. And as you can see, you know, Notepad++ is saying, oh, you know, it, it got updated. This is what it got updated to. So in this case, oh, look at everything's on its own nice little line. So the same kind of concept can come in. Like I said, there was a dot write as well uh, that we could uh, work off of. And so I'm going to say uh, to write is going to be its nice little square brackets. Instead of running the file dot write, Again, we're going to say uh, to write is going to get all these new files added in or all these lines added in. I don't, I'll keep the slash in for now, just for your sake, think about what might happen. And then phi.write lines to write. Okay, I run this. Okay, again, no errors going on there. Uh, I reload it. And as you can see, it's going to go ahead and add in all those lines. Now, I don't believe the slash in. I, I'm, I believe I can uh, remove that slash in in this case, and it will do the same thing. 
Oh, no. Okay. So even with the uh, right lines, just as a, a fun little thing, you do need the uh, slash in as well. So with that, that's how you can start to write to a file.